In this video, we'll be talking about solar plan submittals and all of the items we need to see at Pikes Peak Regional Building in order to get approved and eventually permitted. We'll show you examples of some of the forms our plan reviewers need and what they're looking for on each form. A solar plan goes through two different parts of our plan review division, electrical and construction. We'll start with electrical. For electrical, the first thing we need to see is an approval form from the utility company. Here's an example of an approval form from Colorado Springs Utilities. One of the most common mistakes with an approval form is that the address doesn't match the property for the project. Please make sure you're uploading the right approval form for that particular project. The next thing we look for is a site plan. This is an example of what a site plan might look like. The site plan shows how the system will be laid out on the property. One important item that is often left off of a site plan is an arrow that shows the direction of north. This is required so our plan reviewers can verify that the location of the disconnect is in the right place. It's also important to include a legend to go along with the diagram that you see here. The next set of items that our plan reviewers look for are all manufacturer's specifications. We need to see a module spec sheet, an inverter spec sheet, and an optimizer spec sheet. All three of these can be found on a manufacturer's website and can easily be downloaded and then uploaded to our website during submittal. We'll show you individual examples of all three. This is a module spec sheet. The main thing that we're looking for here are the electrical characteristics. In this example that we're showing you, the electrical characteristics are found down towards the bottom. One thing that we're particularly looking for in those electrical characteristics, the open circuit voltage or VOC, as well as the short circuit current or ISC. If you can't find a VOC on the document you are uploading, it's likely not a module spec sheet. This is an example of an inverter spec sheet. This is normally easy to find because it will likely say inverter at the top as you see here. The main thing we're looking for on this sheet is the maximum continuous output current. That's what you see right around here. This number is needed to determine the basis for calculations. If you don't have this, it's likely not the inverter spec sheet. The optimizer spec sheet is also pretty obvious because it likely says optimizer at the top as you see here. One of the things we look at on this sheet is the max string length to make sure that your system doesn't go over the manufacturer's requirements. In this example that you're seeing here, the max string length can be found towards the bottom. The last document from the manufacturer specs we need to see is a document showing that the rack and solar panels have been evaluated together as a method of grounding the panels. This is an example of what a form might look like. This form not only needs to show that this racking system can handle the solar panels that you're using, but it needs to show that it can handle the specific model number that you're using, and those model numbers can be seen in this section here. Not having a document like this is the number one reason that solar plans get rejected at Pikes Peak Regional Building. This can typically be found in the back of the racking installation manual, and again, this is so important not having a form like this is the number one reason plans get rejected here at Pikes Peak Regional Building. The last thing you need on the electrical side of things is a one-line diagram. This is an example of that. It's a map of how the system is put together for this particular property. It also includes a lot of important information about the equipment being used, and on this example, it can be seen here in this area. The one-line diagram of the system must include overcurrent devices, the wire sizes, how many conductors there are, and the conduit type. On the construction side of the plan review, there are just a few items. The construction plan reviewer will also take a look at the site plan that we've already shown you. In addition to that, they'll also need to see design criteria for the project, and this can be done through a manufacturer configurator printout that you see here, or a letter from an engineer, and here's an example of that. If you're going the route of an engineer letter, don't forget it needs to be stamped and signed by that engineer. So we're showing you examples of both options here. The design criteria that we're looking for includes snow load, wind speed, and wind exposure. For snow, it needs to be 30 PSF if below 7,000 or 40 PSF if above 7,000 feet. For wind, the load minimum is 130 miles per hour, exposure C. The plan reviewers will also be looking at the roof connection spacing and the hardware being used to attach the racking system to the roof. And that's it. 
These are the main items that we're looking for on a solar plan review. Submitting the correct documents discussed in this video will make a big difference when it comes to getting your plan approved. Remember, the quicker the plans get approved, the quicker your company can get the permit and get to work. So be sure to double check the details of each document and upload all of the required forms before submitting. Hope this helps.